in this episode, I am going to be re-reviewing The Marriage of Maria Braun from 1978. I previously reviewed this film about a year and a half ago, and now I'm going to go much deeper into my review of this film with a different guest. This was directed by Reiner Werner Fassbinder, and it starred, I hope I'm not butchering these names, these great German names, Hannah Steigula, Klaus Lauwisch, and Ivan Desny. Welcome to Robert Bellissimo at the Movies. This is a YouTube video podcast where we explore movies from all over the world and talk about how those stories were told, as well as interviews with various industry professionals who work in film, television, and theater. I want to welcome back Adam Shardoff, who has worked in the music industry for many years before turning his attention to film in 2007. In 2011, he founded Film Wax, a media company devoted to the championing of independent films. Film Wax Radio began a short time later, but has since grown into a familiar and popular part of the indie film landscape. He has over 700 episodes with over 1,200 guests. Adam, welcome back. Thanks again for doing this. Thanks. This is great. I love your show. Thanks so much. And I, and I, I love yours. I was, I was actually looking at, cause I, I know when we, we, when I asked you to do the marriage of Maria uh, Braun today, I was, you know, since it's a German film, I was, I was looking through your podcast to see if you, if you have ex- done a lot of, ger- had a lot of German uh, artists. I don't know. You've had uh, Herzog, of course, who's right, very, um, very big in the uh, new German cinema. And uh, Udo Kier, you've had, I don't, I hope I have his name right. You've had him a number do. of times yeah, as twice. well. Right. And uh, he's been in some Fassbender films. That's right. Um, have you, uh, have you, you know, what's your relationship with the, the German film world? Have you, uh, uh, wait a you minute. Ever... <laughs> you left off one other really important uh, person, though. Oh, who? who uh, which is I actually a personal hero. This is goes back a number of years now, but I had on Volker Schlondorf, and I was who oh directed wow, the yes, yeah. he's great. Um, my uh, who directed the Tendrum. Yeah, and uh, you know, so I was uh, really excited because when I was very young and I saw that movie in the movie theater, uh, I when I was thinking about this in anticipation of today, and I was like, why? <laughs> But it reflects my parents and my upbringing that they got me into international film very young because they right. were so into it. And I grew and it was just like all this exciting cinema coming to New York when I was a young, young adult, you know, just coming out of my teens and discovering stuff. And, you know, Tin Drum was right there. I think I might have still been in high school um, mm. when that came out. I think it was like 80. Yeah, 79. 79 yeah. when the tin drum came out and so yeah i was definitely in high school and um i mean i remember going back at least one more time to see it in the movie theater maybe maybe even twice i mean i was just so moved by it so powerful a movie you know just like i was just i don't know so flash forward now you know uh how many years you know 30 40 years and i meet him and i mean my god it was just this fun thing and then he turned out to be a total you know charming person i mean he was just he was enjoying the uh that uh he met somebody who knew his work and who was a fan and and um and then i you know he had a new film so i got to talk to him at the film forum offices it was great i'll have to check then, uh, yeah sorry go ahead you had no that's it that's kind of it i mean so almost as exciting for me as herzog although herzog was a pretty enormous you know opportunity yeah, I I still actually haven't seen the Tin Tin Drum. I have to I have to see that oh, still. Lucky you. Um, but I recently saw by him um, the the young to- uh, the young Torless. I don't know if you've seen that one, but that's in an in a really 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 good. That was one of his early uh, okay. feature films um, that you can find on the uh, Criterion Channel. But is uh, uh, Fa- Fassbinder uh, someone you're deeply familiar with or no you know well i mean kind of just anecdotally you know more than anything i saw the the um one of his earlier films uh you know for whatever whatever reason it was a there's like kind of a few blank spots otherwise i'm pretty 
you know, I'm old enough and I've been doing this long enough where I try to see stuff from everybody that had an impact, you know, because that way you can, you have a context and you can discuss things and understand why they were as important as they were or their contributions were. So he's definitely in that category, you know, and I, but for some reason, I just really had a very limited, uh, you know, ex uh, exposure to his work. And, uh, you know, it just wasn't, it could have been tied to, I, yeah, I can't even, I don't even want to say, because, um, you know, his stuff was just, it, it's a little ja more like of a jagged pill, you know, uh, than let's say Vim Vanders or mm. Volker Schwandorf, you know. Yeah. Um, and so, but I had seen Petra Kant, is that how you pronounce it, Petra, Petra Kant? Um, I'd seen that, I believe that's the one I had seen some time ago. It was all right, I enjoyed it, but I was like, for whatever reason, I just never got, so I was kind of in a way grateful for the opportunity to talk about this particular film because it is so huge, um, you know, and it's certainly maybe one of the most successful of this whole category of yeah. New German cinema, you know. Um, it's right up there. But I, I was always more drawn to, well, certainly Werner Herzog, um, mm. having seen almost everything. I mean, you know, between his documentaries and his narrative. Uh, and then I was also an enormous fan of Wim, Wim Wenders. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. And his, and his German work, you know. Yeah. As well as the American stuff he's done. I mean, and then like kind of in the middle where he was, did the American Friend and all that, you know, like, which was kind of a transitional work you know yeah uh so yeah 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 he's um he has always fascinated me Fassbinder, for for many reasons for one thing he by the time he was in his 30s he early 30s he had already made about 30 movies <laughs> he's a guy like and on top of that you know he was an actor he was a playwright he put on plays like he did not stop working which is partly why he died so young i mean he was a addicted to cocaine and um he he you know even even on even on this film he was doing a lot of cocaine just to get through it because he was kind of going from uh one project to another so it, it's incredible to me that um he had that that work ethic but i i've reviewed this film uh before as as oh. i as i mentioned to you and originally the, the the YouTube channel, when it started just under two years ago, the our reviews were very uh, short with, uh, I had a co-host at the time, they would be like 10 to, to 15 minutes. And, um, uh, you know, I want to go back and, and, and to some of the films I did early on, uh, particularly the ones that seem to be uh, quite popular on uh, my YouTube channel, this being one of them. And, uh, and and just sort of, I, I think there's a lot of things that um, we didn't get into again because of the nature of how short it was. Uh, because this is a, it's a really complicated uh, film and and frustrating uh, in a good way because it's to me it's very uh, challenging material. Um, and I, I'm always left really grappling with his films. Really, they really just stay with me and haunt me. In, in a lot of ways. So I, I was curious after seeing it, how did you, what did you, what did you think of it? Um, I, I had a deeper appreciation for him uh, and for Fassbender and his work. Um, yeah, it's interesting because, well, I don't want to give away the ending, I guess. No, it's Although okay. Maybe, we're, maybe we're, all, it's, uh, we're all spoilers here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I mean, it's interesting how he has to kind of destroy yeah everything you know at the last two hours of kind of literally destroys uh his characters and uh, but um it was a, it's really a, a great example of this generation of filmmakers coming out of post-war germany mm. and the reconstruction both physically as well as economically of that country uh so it's a great example of that um i mean i think and it was a very big success, a result of it, and um, and of just because of his filmmaking. And um, he had, of course, on one of the great cinematographers of all time as well, which we'll get to, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, I was on this. I mean, when you pay 100% attention to it, it's it is a spectacular film.
Yeah. No, I, I agree. This is my uh, third viewing. I, I was curious how you felt about this because I I read a book uh, earlier this year. I had the the writer on. Uh, actually, her name is oh. Sam Deegan, and she wrote a book about how uh, European cinema explored uh, World War II, and um, and it's a fascinating read. And she focuses on every country that was occupied uh, by the Nazis in Europe. Uh, so you know, you have uh, France, you have Italy, uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, countries like that, and you Let's know, not forget Poland. Yeah, Poland. Uh, she did. No, yes, she does have a, a chapter on Poland, of course. Yeah, there is a, about the a Polish film. Um, and one thing that was an eye opener for me, because I, I think I think this is true, that we look at the world, world World War Two in um, a lot of black and white ways, you know, uh, just kind of like a conventional story. You know, they're your antagonists and your protagonists. And if you really you know, if you really look at it, it there was a lot of uh, compromising. There was a lot of complicity. Um, people, countries and people, you know, were, were working with the Nazis and complicit with the Nazis. And but at the same time, you can understand some people had to compromise in order well, to yeah. survive. You know, it was, right, yeah, it was, was going to say it's post survival. And yeah, people made right. You're right. The people made all sorts of various levels of compromise in order to survive. Uh, so it makes it a little harder to judge. Oh yeah, no, no, um, no judgment. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I know. Uh, well, I mean, you can judge. You can. You are perfectly in the right to judge. You know, coming out of that period, um, if that is your feeling, you know. Um, right. But it's also under kind of understand. But I kind of, you know, have a similar feeling about the you know the the blacklist years here in this country, the McCarthy years. Yeah. And, and yeah. how some people, you know, name names is a big subject for me and other people didn't. And, you know, it's easy. For, and I've always historically draw, drawn a line in the sand, you know, morally speaking for my for what I believe in. But the more you read about it and, you know, and think about it, you know, you realize people, again, are, it's all about survival, as you put it. Exactly. You know? A big eye opener. And it relates to this film. And it occurred to me that I I, I think people need to. To, to really fully get invested in this film, you one has to know more about the Germany after the war. And you really see that in this film, uh, not just the fact that, you know, their economy was, was shattered. And, you know, you see that early in the film. Uh, I, I like some of those moments where if anyone dropped a cigarette, like 10 people would jump on it, you know, because people were just... Uh, dying for a smoke or, or, oh, or right. you know, even in her, um, Rash, everything was rationed to the, it, yeah, it, exactly. The and nth degree. Yeah. And, and what, one thing I, I didn't, uh, well, if I noticed, I forgot was that uh, in, in the house they lived in, there was a hole right in the wall. So they were going through room to room, just walking through this hole. Um, and, you know, of course their, their, their school was bombed as, you know, you see her go back to the school and uh, the bar she worked at was a, uh, was a gym, but at, at the same time, there's this big, and Fassbinder uh, often explored these themes of the fact that uh, Germany, the German people, did, they never really looked back at the war. They just really moved forward. They didn't, they no didn't, yeah. they, they, they never really um, reflected on, on what, you know, what the hell happened with um, the Nazis and, and, they, they, you know, there was this economic boom that you see in the film. Uh, Germany really, you know, recovered and the but, economic miracle. I think it was called. Yeah, there, sorry, right? that's right. The economic miracle and Maria Braun very much is someone who, like, she doesn't even. There's not even any mention of the war. You know, like, I, she's just moving forward, moving forward, moving forward in in order to to get what she wants and. You know, she's she's also also trying to, you know, survive, which you can completely understand. But I I I wonder. I think I think one has to sort of know know about how Germany just could not look at themselves. Um, and and now you have a guy like Fassbinder, born at the end of the war, 1945, growing up, seeing that and and explore. And you know, in New German cinema, they were often. Um, 
exploring either indirectly or directly the the war and and you know the the uh you know the complications and the complicities complicities instead of just ignoring it so i don't know if that how obvious those themes are in the film i, I was wondering if they popped out to you at all oh for sure but you know being old enough to know about the history is i just happen to know but it's an interesting point you bring up because like you know uh, often you can see uh dated um you know stories films that take place um during different historical periods of time and is it like gladiator being you know do you, you could just enjoy it on the surface you don't have to yeah. know you know about the gladiator age you know the roman age i mean you 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 it helps but here in this film it's really it does seem to be important to kind of have a, some context to appreciate yeah you know can you just enjoy this it's almost like you can't really enjoy it on the surface because it's kind of it requires you to lean in and it requires you to uh it's not inter, it's not like entertainment you know no. I mean? for on the surface entertainment this story is you know and it's an, maybe one of the reasons to get back to your first question about it, like you know why maybe i've resisted because i always found even other prickly filmmakers that, that you could enjoy their films with enter for the entertainment value even the werner herzog in many cases i mean if you're you know just watching uh Aguirre or you know i don't know you know any of his other epics. his not his nosferatu remake <laughs> any of the yeah i mean there is <laughs> yeah. you can enjoy them on different levels you know whereas right, here right you really kind of it's so specific you know very much so very much so. I mean, it, it has a, you know, I mean, because he was he was greatly influenced by classic Hollywood filmmakers. Uh, he loved Douglas Sirk. I mean, Sirk right. was German, German and, sure. and moved to uh, he loved the Sirk films. He loved noir. Uh, this is another take on Mildred Pierce with uh, Joan Crawford, you know, because that it's a, you know, very, very similar story of a woman who became, you know, independent oh, right. and uh, uh had to get by in, yeah right yeah, by her own wits right yeah exactly so 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 certainly you know it, it it's 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 quite a thick uh melodramatic plot and um and and deeply complicated and, and psychological um but she's always fascinated me because she's so this this coldness that develops with her and and how she becomes she's able to become really unemotional uh and and not get invested in emotions and just just calculate her plans uh step by step and and early on in the film you know she's she's warmer you see her with her family and it's it's at the point where the scene where uh, she overhears some Americans uh, clearly joking about her in a cafe mm -hmm. or a, a bar, and um, she confronts them, and then they they give her some cigarettes because they 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 you know felt bad. So this is when she starts to realize that she was um, confident and capable in order to to get things through transactions and the, I, you know the fact that she was very beautiful she's very attractive very beautiful. Uh, and and confident and tough so the first thing we see is the the cigarettes um then she gets that the idea to go work in in that bar the uh the bar where only american troops were allowed in and um you know you see her with the the guy and that that was actually fast uh fast pinder playing the guy the black market oh, yeah. guy and oh i know he gives her, I yeah, I do. I do know what he looks like, though. So, yeah, yeah. I, I actually forgot he was in it because he has those sunglasses and, and it, it, it you, his, his eyes are totally hidden. So it's uh, his mother's I, in it, too. Right. I didn't even know that. Yeah, his mother, he gives his mother at one point. Uh, she She's behind a window, I think, selling a ticket or something to 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 uh, Maria. But uh, oh, OK. Yeah, he cast his mother in a number of his films in small roles. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't I didn't yeah. know that. But um and so she, you know, she gets this, she she becomes to because this she is not someone who had uh had had been a career person before. I mean, you see her, she's very much like her the friend, her uh friend who I, I think they 
lives with her in that in that uh, building who um, you know was at home and very traditional uh, work you know life where the husband worked and she's she's the one at home and so her her husband Herman is missing at this point. I mean, you see off the top they're getting married as bombs are dropping on their head. Uh, so they they only had a couple of days together and then he went back uh, you know it, to fight in in the war so so she's she has to become independent. She has to work. She has to survive. And uh, times are, are, are really, really tough. So I was, I was so fascinated by once she meets Bill in the, the bar, the, the black uh, American soldier, you know, he teaches her English. They, uh, they begin this affair. And this scene happens with uh, Herman, which is interesting where, where she thinks he's dead. But uh, because their their friend who came back from the war said that he was dead, and she begins this affair with uh, Bill, and then he comes back. And I was curious your opinion on this because when I reviewed it with my uh, previous co-host, mm-hmm. he hated this scene. He thought this scene was so f- was uh, done in a very uh, I mean he was harsh. I mean he felt it was like Tommy Wiseau had directed it from the room which I thought was rather harsh because <laughs> uh, you, you see Herman comes back, they get into a fight, Bill and Herman oh, get into a fight. And then he walks in on them having, you know. They're about to have sex. Right, yeah. They're about to have, right, they're pre-coital. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I mean, Bill is, is naked and uh, she's yeah. in bed yeah. and uh, he walks in and he, it's, the whole thing is um, intentionally um, sort of stagey looking. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, because first of all, he's the husband of Herman. He opens the door. How would they not notice that? Like, it takes yeah, them, it, it takes, takes a while them, it before takes they, them a little bit. <laughs> and then there is this sort of very. Again, I say the word intentionally stagey nature to this little, you know, confrontation, this fight. And then she she Maria, you know, hits uh, her. Uh, Bill over the uh, head with a bottle, like a wine bottle or something, it's, which is looks like a fake bottle. It, it just shatters, and then Bill slumps over onto Herman, and then he's dead. I mean, yeah. it's just it's it's um, I don't know why it, it's it's not done unintentionally. Right? Um, no, so, not at all. Not also, at all. You know, it looks uh, so maybe it's meant to look like an old, you know, Hollywood melodramatic moment um on i think I, I i i think so i think that's what he was going for and and he uh, hana uh who plays maria she she had said that he told her don't feel guilty at all about what you're doing so what you actually if you notice when he comes in she's just so happy he's there i mean there's no like oh my god i'm having an affair and now my yeah. husband's actually and right and like what, you know she, you caught me uh, yeah. betraying you and yeah and and he he wanted to go beyond that uh uh ah. common reaction of the oh my god and now i'm hitting him and 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 well, what have did. i done i've killed this guy and she's just yeah. so she just hits him as if she didn't hit him and she just looks over at her and it's and it's sort of funny in a way uh and she smiles and he's just very serious and so my 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 co-host hated the scene but i but at the same time i re- i had i had commented i was curious what you thought that you have to also remember what these people had been through and and you know herman i'm sure saw much worse than a guy getting hit over the head with a bottle you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> fighting with the and nazis also, right? you know if that that what what families had to do to survive and what women had to do to survive not knowing if their their husbands were alive or not like 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 exactly uh, yeah uh, and as you know uh i think your whole level of what's acceptable or permissible (laughs) goes goes out the window in a time like that you know when it's exactly about about survival day-to-day survival so so um it's not wholly without belief that uh you know a husband might walk in you know and find your their wife in a relationship with somebody else um or having becoming a prostitute for that matter or doing whatever you got to do right 
Right. Um, whereas obviously in normal times, that would be uh, unacceptable. Yeah, exactly. It, that's, that's exactly it. So that, that never, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that never struck me as being particularly false. Uh, no. I, I, I thought it was really uh, unique and, and, and it made sense later when you see her, her husband says that he did it. So he would go to jail instead of her. And she starts to work with uh, Oswald, this guy she meets on, on a train, who's this, you know, big businessman. Industrialist or whatever. Yeah, big industrialist. And it was interesting the way in which she in- introduced herself to him, because at first she, you know, this is empty carts. It's all first class. And he's the only one in it first. And, you know, and, and she just, she, she flirts with him a little bit, but then she pretends that she's, you know, sleeping, but she asks to sit right beside him. And then that other uh, American soldier comes in and he's acting like a jerk. And then <laughs> she just coldly, like, you know, wow, like brutally says, you know, I'm going to kick you in the balls and get the fuck out of here, basically. And that's when um, Carl starts to see, you know, this is a really unique, confident, uh, tough woman. And she she begins to work for him. And I, 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 I'm I curious what you what you thought, because she was clearly intelligent, clearly conf, confident, clearly capable and, and good at, at in business. And uh, Oswald saw this, but he starts to have feelings for her. And, and she is the one who drives the boat on this affair. She says, hey, let's go. Uh, I want to sleep with you tonight, just very casually. And I you know, and here she is married and she's doing all this because her husband is in jail so that when they get out of jail, they can start their life together. So again, I I love this about Fassbender's films because he's not just giving you a clear, simple motivation. It's very ambiguous. It's very uh, complicated. So on the one hand, you can think, okay, well, maybe she has you know, she's uh, she's alone. So she has uh, she has needs. She likes she does say that she likes him. She she needs to, uh, uh, you know, fill her sexual desires. But on the other hand, uh, perhaps she felt that that was necessary to get ahead. It's almost like a femme fatale in that sense. And, you know, again, this is a take on Mildred Pierce uh, is, you know, she probably felt in this men's world that me being confident and good at this is not going to be enough. I have to also sleep with with this guy i don't know what you thought right well it could also be that there's an awakening um with her because of these circumstances that where she starts to get a sense of her own level of independence uh and and sovereignty and power and you know um it's more feminist look at it which is out of step with the times that the film was made perhaps or you know i don't know if if fassbender would would have thought about but she was a real fem. i mean there is a this feminist angle to her her character because she she's without ever seeming to have something to prove she's constantly taking control over her situations you know and yes yeah, you which know, I she, she's brought on, let's say, by Carl to because she's beautiful and he thinks she'll be good with clients, you know, his clients who are male, of course. And um, yeah, but she's uh, in control of those situations. You know, she rises above the sec, just purely the, the physical and sexual. Um, there's that, too. But, you know, she's in control of it. You never think of her as a victim, in other words. No, no, I, I, that's well said. And I, I love the scene when she she just she goes and tells Herman, her husband, I, I had I, I'm sleeping with this guy again. It's very much like when she kills Bill. Again, there's there's no sense of guilt. There's no sense of shame that she's cheating. She's right. just very blunt. Like this is what you know, I, I have the upper hand. And and I'm controlling this guy, and I'm going to do this and that. And and Herman says, "When did the world get so cold?" And she says, "No, it works for me, <laughs> because in other words, right. well, uh, 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 emotions get in the way. I can just is, again plow forward by right. my moves, which runs my counter, which runs counter to like Cirque, you know, films. I mean, they're very, yeah, I don't know, maybe." You know, I'm thinking of, I, of, I think of the, the very emotional 
people in the Cirque movies, the melodrama and stuff. Whereas here, it's everybody's very, very uh, cold. <laughs> yeah, cold. there's a coldness, or you know, um, or what's the word? Not apathy, but uh, maybe apathy too. But you know, yeah, just a lack of emotionality uh, or, or whatever emotion. Um, it's interesting, yeah. But it's a you know. Uh, it's what that generation had to do to get yes. to the next level. Uh, those that were alive during the Holocaust or during, you know, the war and, um, you know, and the Germany committed such atrocities, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, you understand why these people kind of had to just get out of their own heads. Like it's, how would you operate otherwise? You know, you so it would make sense. Maybe yeah. the next generation would be to pick up the, the in a way the, you know, um, yeah, uh, they would be more attuned in tuned with that and with sort of the guilt, you know, the responsibility of repairing the relation, you know, what they and make good for what they did is, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know that. I'm just that, thinking, I don't, I'm not really, I'm speaking a little bit outside my sphere of knowledge, but I did know some Germans people and, you know, I, I know that it was the subsequent generations that really felt that they had to uh, compensate, you know. Mm. Yeah, no, that's they a good point. Responsible for their parents or their grandparents. Yeah, exactly. No, that's a good point. And I, li I like the way you put that because, yeah, the, the German you know, the Nazis committed such atrocities that are, you know, the worst things that have ever happened in, in history. So here you are, 1945, coming out of that, someone very much like Maria Braun. And, and how do you, how do you deal with that? How do you confront it? You, it's, 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 um, it's impossible, you know, uh, I mean, it's not that it's impossible, but it's, it's uh, extremely, extremely difficult. So it makes sense that, like you said, the next generation whose parents would have been someone like Maria Braun, uh, Fassbender again, born in 45. And now he's seeing it. He's, 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 he wasn't there. Right. But he witnessed the, the reactions and the way in which it affected people. And, and now is, is putting it in these stories and, and Maria very much has to shut herself off in order to plow forward. And she, she prides herself on the fact that, she's always one step of, uh, ahead of everyone. And I, I love this um, conversation she had with Carl and Carl's assistant. Uh, and, and he's, and he's, 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 he's relief. yeah, he's, he's very uh, wary of her and she, and then, you know, and sexist too, because, you know, he says, well, we've never had a woman, you know, uh, in any kind of position of power. And she says, well, I'll be the first, <laughs> you know, and I just love their, um, I love the way in which she interacted with him. And then when, when they were getting some uh, pushback from a, a client, I presume, uh, and, and then she says, you know, let me be alone with him for a half an hour. I don't know if she meant that she would sleep with him, but the other guy certainly immediately thought that's what she meant. He's like, we don't do business that way. Right? So, so um, again, you, you, you don't know exactly what she meant, but she certainly felt that she could close the deal and that, and, she had, again, it wasn't just about the, this transactional manner, but she um, was, was very good with business. And, but as a, as a result of closing herself off, you can only do that for, for so long until you become cruel. I mean, then you start to see she's, she's really mean to this guy, Carl. I mean, she's, she's using him. She's sleeping with him. Uh, he's confessing his love to her. He doesn't understand why she won't get married. He, he doesn't even know about the fact that she's married, of course, then, then he finds out. Um, and, you know, she'll call him on the phone about going to this birthday party for her mother. And he'll say, oh, I'll pick you up. And she's like, no, and hangs up, you know. So and I love the scene with the secretary where, you know, he's calling her and she could tell him I'm not here. And then and then she goes, tell her I won't have lunch with you. And then she says it. She won't have lunch with you. And then the secretary feels so bad because because she didn't she you know, she feels as if she was the one just saying that to Carl and Carl hung up. And so she starts crying. And then you see Maria starts to laugh. Right. So I, I felt that because she was 
she was closing herself off. She was becoming so hard that she was, it was making her cruel and almost making her hate herself in a lot of ways. I don't know how you felt about what was going on with her psychologically throughout the film from this coldness. Well, you make a good point. You can get very used to, uh, ice, um, you know, um, compartmentalizing or cutting yourself off. Uh, I, I think you're right. That, 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 that's certainly what I, what I took from it. And when you see her go, you know, she, <laughs> she buys this house. This was what's so fascinating about her is that she, she becomes so rich, so successful. She buys this huge house. You would think most people would be proud of themselves, happy, but she's, you know, yelling at the movers. She's, uh, being mean to her mother, her mother starts to be, you know, say, you know, you you don't even know who you are anymore. And I was really fa- the really fascinated by this aspect of, of, and I think this is very common, is that we sometimes in life we we have these goals, we have these ideals, and we we stubbornly pursue them, and then we sort of lose track of why we're doing it. Like I don't even think she knows why she's doing this anymore. It's like, do you love your husband? You know, um, she says she does. But then when he turns up at the end, she's avoiding intimacy at all costs. You know, she's like, do you need a bath? Do you want to eat first? Um, it's it's really it's really peculiar. I don't know if that, that popped out to you. I mean, what do you think that she just got so wrapped up in what she wanted to do that she just didn't know why she needed to do this anymore? You know, it's a good question. I think... Um it's not drawn out for us, you know, it's just, no, it's not. Yeah. You know? Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, but, um, I still find her tremendously, I don't know. There's something about her. I find very likable anyway, you know, me too. Um, through through, Through it all. I mean, you know, she's not, he didn't make characters that were like you said at the beginning, uh, so black and white, you know, they, they were, they were just all kind of had complicated, uh, char- you know, personalities. I also, you know, one thing that was interesting about this ending was, um, you know, cause I, every time I see this ending, I rewind it, you know, and watch it a couple of times because, uh, I'm, it's, it, it's so, again, it's ambiguous because, you know, Herman comes over and then at the same time, now Carl has passed away and he left this will. And then you find out that the will, he gave more to Herman than he did to her. And then he talks about this friendship with Herman. And so she, of course, is shocked. This is the first time that someone was a step ahead of her uh, because the whole film, she prides herself on being in control and a step. Right. And I don't know if Carl did this as a way to punish her, to, to control her, to say that I'm basically, you know, buying you and selling you or, uh, you know, so he gives, you know, he, he strikes up this friendship with uh, Herman when he's in prison, you see that happen when he goes and visits her. But then he says, you know, Herman, my dear friend, Herman, who sacrificed everything. And then she goes into the washroom and she runs water over her wrists, which is the same thing she did when she thought Herman had died as if she couldn't cry, you know, it's like, she's just, Mm. again, closed off by emotion. So, you know, it's, you know, I'll put water over my wrist. So I get the sensation of crying. That's the way I, I, uh, I took to Mm. it. And this, this gas stove that she had left on earlier before she even found out about that. And then you don't see what she did. She goes into the kitchen, you see Herman look over and he says, screams out, no. And, they both die in this explosion. But so she goes back into she. Well, they have ovens. The stove top is used. The gas stove is used to light the match. So it's, yeah, the that's cigarette. Right. Yeah, for and the she first cigarette. It on. And she goes back yeah. again and later on to to uh, not realizing she left the uh, the gas leaking. Yeah. So yeah. when she goes back to light another, uh, when she lights the stove, it you know, with the match, probably it. It, it was a huge amount of gas in the room. So it exploded. Well, yeah, well, well, which is interesting because, you know, when you see her husband look over, he looks as if he's saying, hey, what are you doing? Like as if she was doing something. Because well, that- I think he somehow, maybe he saw that the, the stove had been, or he smelled it or something. Yeah. Something so, like that. So you're like, okay, was this some kind of uh, unconscious 
you know, suicide? Does she leave it on open on no, purpose? I don't, so. I, I don't know, you know, that it's or that was seems it unlikely, but to me, but I don't interpret it that way. But uh, it's more to me, I see as, as the director inserting himself and returning it back to the beginning where things were exploding at the beginning of the film, you know. But, yeah, uh, yeah. And I, I can't say, you know, again, like he has certain things that you, you, you again, or is not. In a, in a good way, he's not feeding you why he's doing everything. But because at the same time, you hear uh, Germany versus uh, Hungary, the World Cup final, 1954, on the radio, and Germany right. wins. So, and I, I can't take credit for this because I was like, why does he have that soccer game on at the end? Uh, and there's a great featurette on the Criterion channel where uh, a scholar talks about, you know, again, it's it was another illustration of, you know, Germany moving forward, victory, and then right. they're at the same time, this explosion. So I think it was sort of a, of, of a, of a way of saying, you know, if you guys, if, if we just keep on this uh, victorious <laughs> uh, um, moving forward, everything's great, everything's fine, uh, something's going to explode, uh, you know, and, and, and this is going to backfire if we just keep ignoring the past, which is what Maria Braun did. And, you know, and, and ultimately she, she dies for it. You know, I don't know if that was, if you wondered about that ending with the soccer on that's, that's uh, again, I looked it up. I can't take credit for that, <laughs> but I thought that was interesting. I don't know what you f- feel about that. Um, yeah, no, I think that's a great interpretation. I mean, I think, uh, you know, it, they, you know, it could be like, you know, well, it's a sports game. It's still kind of superficial way of looking at victory. It's not, you know, um, really healing the, you know, the country it's, it's just a sports victory, but you know, exactly, you know, um, but it's, it's pretty, I know that very intentionally used the radio throughout the movie. Yeah. Yeah, because he is even early in the film, and this was yeah. something else I was thinking about, was, you know, w- right before she starts working for Carl, and there's a couple of times where they're just talking about, you know, things to do around the house, and on the radio, they're talking about politics, but no one's commenting on anything, no one's saying, hey, you hear what they're saying about, uh, you know, they're talking about how Germany has to rearm and all this kind of stuff, and uh, again, there's no comments, there's no um there's there's no one's interested in it They're again they're just moving they're going and going and going uh and uh, that 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 again i'm just i'm so fascinated by how he he did this you know i don't it, and that ending in particular i don't know if you did you find yourself looking at that ending a few times <laughs> twice maybe i think I yeah saw it twice you know yeah I, I, yeah um but um I want, you know, before, as you know, before we, I do definitely want to mention the, uh, you know, Michael Bauhaus and. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, who was the, this worked with uh, Fassbender so much. I think they did yeah. well over a dozen films together, right? Most, they, most of, most of the films are, are with uh, Bauhaus. Yeah. yeah. But like, uh, you know, Fassbender was a brilliant filmmaker. So he drew the best people. And they tried and they worked with him until they just couldn't anymore. You know, um, exactly. Yeah. Bauhaus was definitely one who just had reached the end of his, his tether, uh, you know, working because uh, it was just probably very frustrating as, as yeah. artistically or creatively gratifying yeah. on a personal level. It, it probably was really, really difficult working with Fassbinder. Yeah. So, well, and, and he was know, also, he was also very di- like, abusive and, t- right. and difficult yeah. yeah so yeah um definitely so um and Bauhaus they lit the they you know you could appreciate how the you could see his work throughout the film as things get brighter and the his right because he made those very intentional changes and in, throughout the film um uh in terms of as prosperity as as and as Maria was enjoying prosperity more the film opens up the brightness in the film yes way it's shot and the colors are you know uh they're more there's more color etc so um i was that was fascinating and um you know obviously Bauhaus was a real deep <laughs> artistic guy you know um, oh yeah and yeah. then 
you know, left. I mean, I think he just had when at the re- end of the relationship, but he had just to leave Germany. You know, it's uh, oh, yeah. it wasn't enough just to leave to separate <laughs> it's like I get professionally out of from Pesmer, but he kind of <laughs> he left for the United States. Of course, he had the yeah. opportunity to work on the Martin Scorsese movie. Um, so so he went and- from one coke addict to another <laughs> having said that Scorsese kicked as far as I know he's kicked the habit oh, yeah yeah but he, he also it. was uh, addicted to cocaine apparently back then yeah um, and he started working with uh Scorsese um on after hours and then the next half dozen films um yeah. and uh, including Goodfellas you know and uh, the Dep- up to the departed I think yeah gangs in yeah. new york and de- departed it's a fascinating film i mean it's a film that you can see again and again and discover and discover so much um but i i just i just love it uh again <laughs> my co-host i remember at the time he hated it uh but that's him well yeah i mean if you're you know it because again i could see why you know there is you really kind of have to um you know it's a particular, it's a lot of pain underneath this, you know, because even though you're, as you pointed out many times that Maria cuts herself off from associating with her pain and her yes. post-traumatic, dis, you know, uh, suffering that, you know, most people would have coming out of uh, such destruction, you know, uh, it's there in the film anyway. So you have to take it on yeah. <laughs> as a, as a somebody's experiencing the film it's um you know it's undeniably there so you know it's like a lot of films of that period where you know coming from europe and went on for many many years still today even there people make the films with such stories but uh you know what year was this film 1978 78 so they shot at 76 77 perhaps i mean you're talking about 30 years 40 35 years you know it's not that long you know yeah uh, but anyway it's there in the film so you you don't watch this movie for entertainment value per se but you do find but it is there is a catharsis there and i think that's what you're experiencing maybe yeah you know i mean it's an incredible gift of a film um, oh absolutely in terms of the acting in terms of the writing and the you know that it does force you to think about it, these characters Abs- it absolutely. doesn't give you doesn't pan feed the you know everything to you whether it's you know people's um interpret uh, excuse me their motivations um you know and we know that not every, there's no one really that likable in the movie i mean they're all kind of complicated there's aspects of everybody in this movie that are probably you know so i guess i'm just you know to repeat myself i i you know i think it's a film that requires a lot from you as a viewer absolutely and then pays off you know yeah yeah no I very well recommend said. it i don't recommend seeing a lot of his films one after <laughs> give some no space. yeah do, do, they're, do they're one intense. a month maybe one a month or one yeah. maybe one every yeah if I'm you're like go me a, yeah one a week i'm gonna definitely want to see <laughs> right I, yeah if you call me for another one make you know <laughs> Maybe somebody different, but uh, yeah, yeah. Now I'm gonna try to catch a couple more before you know, because there there are a number of them. Well, they're part of the very essential Criterion films. I don't know, you know, yeah. like it's essential part of the um, canon of Criterion, you know, in Janus film. So I don't think, yeah, you're gonna go away anytime. You know, it's like uh, no, I don't think so. No, they're pretty much all on the Criterion channel. But I'm I'm glad you I'm glad you checked it out and and that we could uh, discuss it in depth today. So where where's the best? I know your website is filmwaxradio.com. Do I have that right? Yep. And and uh, which and of course you're on Twitter and Instagram and people can yeah, find you um, pretty much. Yep. Yep. Um, you know I can never keep up enough as well. But yes, uh, all slash filmwax radio. I mean, I call the YouTube channel Filmwax TV. It's like a nickname, but it's it's still youtube.com slash Filmwax Radio. And um, it's an inter- more of an interview format than it is, let's say, a review format where I don't really review films. Right. So so it's kind of a nice opportunity that when you invite me on, because I, I get to talk about films in a different way. So it's kind of a nice um, perk for me to come on and talk about these classics, you know, and I 
So, you know. Great. Thank you. Great. You know. No, thank you. Thanks for coming on and let's do it again sometime soon. Yeah, for sure. Maybe okay. a comedy though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for watching and or listening. If you are currently listening to this on the audio version of my YouTube video podcast and you've run out of episodes to listen to, head over to the YouTube channel where every single episode that I've ever recorded can be found, youtube.com slash Robert Bellissimo at the movies. I also want to thank all of my members on Patreon for their ongoing support. If you're interested in becoming a member of my Patreon, head over to the link patreon.com slash Robert Bellissimo at the movies for full details. Patreon is bonus content that I create month in and month out. And it is based on polls that I put out at the beginning of every single month, which you will have access to, which will make you very much part of the decision making as to what I do on Patreon month in and month out. So if you like my work and you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, head over to the link for full details. And lastly, if this is your first time here on my YouTube video podcast, or if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing by pressing the Robert Bellissimo at the Movies logo. You will see it floating above my head in the top left corner to your top left in just a second. Just click on that and then click the bell in order to get a notification every time I release one of my new episodes or when I go live. Thank you so much, everyone. I will see you in the next episode.